So in a previous video, I just updated this laptop from Windows 7 to Windows 10, and we've done all of the Windows updates and things like that. However, the last thing I told you guys to do was to defrag the hard drive. And on this particular one, as you can see from all these gray blocks, there's a lot of messy files on this computer. These gray blocks are unmovable and cannot be defragged. Um, and this stuff is system files like the Hyper file, the page file, and probably, um, uh, possibly there's some uh, system restore points and things like that. So I'm just going to quickly show you how to tidy this up and uh, just generally what I do in terms of just tidying up this laptop now. I kind of didn't want to go into this in this series, but I feel like um, this is the first thing that people are going to ask me is, well, what do you do to tidy up afterwards? Because a defrag is the minimum that you need to do. And that will fix the worst of it. But as you can see, this computer, this defrag is, there's more to it than this because all these unmovable files cannot be defragged and that needs to be dealt with. So I've stopped the defrag and I'm just going to do a bit of tidying up. So let's just minimize this for a sec. So the first thing I'm going to do is a little bit of creature comforts. I'm going to answer my phone. Be right back. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, collapse the search bar because I find it very big and obnoxious. So I'm going to change that to just a search icon uh, because I don't need a big search bar on my taskbar. This is just a preference, but yeah, this is just how I do it. In addition to that, Cortana is dead. Just just turn off the Cortana button. Uh, Cortana is being decommissioned. It, Cortana used to be the search system in Windows. Now it's been separated from the search system and it's just a digital assistant and I'm expecting to see it disappear in the future versions of Windows 10. Um, it was a failed project, never took off. Anyway, so uh, then I'm also going to just unpin a couple of things from this taskbar. Uh, so we don't need Microsoft Edge because uh, this customer is clearly using um, Firefox. So I'm going to unpin that. Um, the Windows Mail app is a big pile of rubbish. I do not recommend using it. So I'm going to unpin that. Um, because I want to discourage the customer from starting to use that. Uh, for mail, it's always best to use, uh, unless you know what you're doing, I always recommend using webmail. So if you have, for example, a Gmail account, go to gmail.com. Don't try and set up your Gmail account on a program like Windows Mail or anything like that, because it's just extra steps. Um, so uh, let's also, we've got two Firefox icons here. I'm just going to mouse over those. Firefox 2, so let's get rid of that one because that's the duplicate. Um, let me see, the uh, media player, it looks like that gets used regularly, so I'll leave that alone. There's also a Chrome install there, I will leave that alone as well. So the next thing I want to do is I want to clear the hibernation file and the page file because those are the two system files that are making a mess in defrag. So uh, what I will do is I will switch off hibernation mode because that's just not really needed on modern computers. Modern computers sleep really well and hibernation just isn't necessary. It's a really old concept. So I'm actually going to turn that off. To do this, I'm going to right click on the start menu and open PowerShell Admin and accept the UAC. And I'm going to type power CFG, so power config. Uh, it's still loading. Power config space dash H for hibernate space off. So power config hibernate off. And I'll press enter. And that should just kick me back to the prompt with no confirmation. And it's actually going to take a while because right now it's deleting the hibernation file because that's no longer required. If you were to turn on Hibernate again, we could then do power config H on to switch it back on and it'll remake the Hibernation file the next time we Hibernate. However, as I say, no one uses Hibernate. Okay, that's that done. So we can close that. Now I'm going to reduce the page file size down to a minimal level. So to do this, I'll open a, a Explorer window, right click on this PC and click Properties. Then I'm going to hit Advanced System Settings. And under the Advanced tab, we'll go to Performance Settings, Advanced, and Change Virtual Memory. Now, this is currently set to a custom size from the previous time where I have for, um, 
from the previous time when I've serviced this computer. A two gigabyte page file is my weapon of choice for page files. I'll explain that more in a different video. Um, however, for the time being, I'm going to drop this down to the minimum size, which is 16, and I'm going to hit set. And then I'm going to answer my phone again. And we'll hit yes, OK, and then restart. OK, so now we've rebooted. Uh, the laptop is going to feel even slower because we've just reduced the page file down to almost nil. Um, however, there's method in the madness. We've got to tidy up and then we'll put a new page file in place that will bring back that lost performance. However, there's one more thing that we need to do first. Uh, I'm going to go back into system properties again. So right click this PC and go to properties. And I'm just going to make sure that system restore is also turned off. Oof, come on, little MSI, we're almost there. It seems painful now, but once we've done this, it'll be all right. Okay, so one restart later, and I've gone back into the same system properties panel that we were in before. However, I'm also going to go over to system protection, and we're going to check on system restore settings. So I'll click on C drive and hit configure. Now, uh, at the very least, I recommend deleting all restore points for this drive because all of the restore points are going to be from Windows 7 and are now useless. So you definitely want to delete those so you create new restore points. And personally, in my opinion, I disable system protection because system restore, in my experience, is extremely unreliable and in Windows 10, almost never works. I think I've seen System Restore work under Windows 10 one time, and I do this all day every day. Um, now, there are other times where System Restore can be really helpful because it can retain other versions of files. So if you accidentally uh, overwrite a file, you can revert it to a previous state. However, at the end of the day, this is not a replacement for proper backup. If you back up your files properly, and if you use a cloud service like a Google Drive or Dropbox uh, to provide version history, that is a much better solution than System Restore. So personally, my advice is to leave System Restore turned off. It's not worth it. But if you want to, you can keep it turned on. Just delete the current restore points so you can make new ones. So let's OK out of that. And the last bit of cleanup that I'm going to do now, this stage is optional, but I would recommend it, is um, to go into this PC, right click on C drive and go to properties. And we're going to run disk cleanup. And what disk cleanup will allow us to do is to remove the old Windows 7 system files. As things currently stand, we can actually roll this computer back to Windows 7 if we want. Um, and previously, that was something that I enabled. Just hit clean up system files. However, because Windows 7 is now out of support, at this point, we have zero intention of going back to Windows 7 because it's unsupported and we're not going to use it anymore. Uh, on pre you know, In the past, I've given customers that choice. I've left the old Windows 7 files there and said, if you really don't like Windows 10, we can roll it back for you. However, at this point, Windows 7 is dead, we're not entertaining it anymore. So we're going to run disk cleanup and we're going to remove the old Windows 7 files. And that also means that we won't have to defrag them. So I'll just wait for that to load up. This can take a while. Disk cleanup is not a quick utility. However, it is thorough. Okay, now this is finally opened up. I'm going to go down this list and um, I'm going to select everything Basically, we're going to clean up all the temporary files, all of the guff. So error reports, caches, all of it. The only one we want to watch out for is downloads. You want to make sure that that is unchecked because that will clear your downloads folder. And the big one here, previous Windows installation, that's going to free up 25 gigabytes. So that's a really nice tidy up. So we're actually going to find 30 gigs from running this. So let's run that through. And this will take quite a while as well. But once we've cleared this, that's our cleanup done. And then we've just got to defrag. OK, one disk cleanup later. And now when I start up OusLogix defrag or defragler, whichever you prefer to use, we should find that we have a much more agreeable view in front of us. So we'll wait for that to load. And I'm going to hit defrag and optimize. And we'll just let that start analyzing. So 
this is all going to go red, which is what we're expecting, but in a way that's a good thing because it means there's more to clean up. What we don't want to see is lots of grey blocks. And so far, so good. There's one or two around, like there's that there. So yeah, that's file bitmap stuff, that's fine. There's always going to be one or two things that you can't move. And there is, yeah, file bitmap again. So there's a couple of bits here and there. However, at the start of this video, we had grey everywhere on this, which was really going to limit the um, improvement that we could get from a defrag. Whereas now, all of that stuff has been cleared up. So this defrag is really going to deep clean properly. So I'm going to leave this to run now. Um, this is probably going to take, I would estimate, a couple of hours to do this defrag. However, once this is done, we can restore our page file and we should have something that actually feels like a usable computer. So I'll see you guys after another cut. All right, our defrag is done. Didn't take as long as I thought. Actually, hour and 10 minutes. Not bad going. So now when I close this, I should find that the laptop now actually feels pretty responsive. Start menu, not too bad. This PC, not bad. Browse around some folders. Start and settings. That's a lot better than it was before. This has still got a hard drive in it. No SSD on this thing. That's not too shabby. Okay, let's do a couple of last bits on this and we're done. So Windows security is moaning at me. So I'm just gonna check what that wants. So sign in with a Microsoft account for enhanced security and other benefits. So yeah, signing in with a Microsoft account it is a good idea. It does give you access to more perks of Windows 10, such as um, uh, automatically signing in on applications that support it, like Microsoft Store apps and things like that. Uh, it also means that automatically you'll be able to use um, OneDrive and you can use that for just backing up documents and things like that. Um, it's up to you whether that's useful or not. I personally don't use it, but that's simply because I use Google Drive and I'm invested in the Google ecosystem. However, if you're setting up someone's computer, it can often be a really good idea to get them signed into Microsoft because you can get all kinds of useful things out of that that can be handy in a pinch. So I'll dismiss that one for now. So uh, security is now happy. Uh, we've got ESET NOD32 on this. Um, I mentioned uh, another time that I'm not a fan of third-party antivirus. However, NOD32, it is the best of the third-party antiviruses and they will have paid for this. And it's on auto renewal, uh, which doesn't expire until 21. So we're gonna make sure that this is all set as well. Um, so this is saying that they can't update. So um, that's fine. This just needs to be updated. So I'll do that offline. So now that's done, we're gonna add our page file back in. So I'm gonna right click on this PC, go to properties and advanced system settings, advanced tab, performance, advanced, change virtual memory, and I'm gonna set this back to 2048. Set. And we've also got a system manage page file on W drive, which is one of the recovery drives. I'm gonna turn that off. And then we're gonna hit okay. Okay, we could get rid of that, but there's no real pressing urge to do that. It's not doing anyone any harm, so I'm just gonna leave it alone. There comes a time when you're working on someone else's computer, especially where you only need to do what you're required to do. Um, and also we're going out of the scope of what we need to do in this video as well. At any rate, we've now got this computer upgraded to Windows 10, so it can live on for a little bit longer. And as I say, considering it's got a hard drive in it, it's actually not horrifically slow. The last thing I'm gonna do is tidy up this start menu, but I've shown how to do that in another video. So thank you very much for watching everyone. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.